Welcome. You're listening to the best of investing on Fox News Radio, 9, 10 a.m. This is the show where we present valuable information about real estate, the financial markets, and other economic business of the day. For those of you listening to the, uh, our show for the first time, here's our format. A few guys sitting around the bar having drinks without the drinks, talking business with you, the audience listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, and I'm honored to have as my co-host Mark Hoff with Pacific Private Money. Our phone number is 888-912-1190. Now write that number down, 888 888- 912-1190. Use that number to answer the trivia questions for three vacations during, uh, given away during each commercial break. That's right, we're giving away nine vacations during this show. The vacations are sponsored by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, located one hour northeast of San Francisco. And today's trivia uh, theme is songs relating to water. Is that specific enough for water? water? Okay. <laughs> yes. Theme songs, Should be interesting. Uh, songs relating to water. Okay, and, and movie theme songs relating to water. And uh, the vacations are free. Their only request is a $75 cleaning fee to ha- cover housekeeping expenses. Their website, lighthouseforfun.com. You can call them at 916-777-5511 and check them out. And at one of the commercial breaks, I will be asking the special trivia question today where the winner is going to receive a free three-day, two-night stay at the Ritz-Carlton Half Moon Bay Resort. And the winner will be announced the following week. And the Ritz-Carlton Half Moon Bay boasts the best brunch in the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco Bay's only oceanfront resort. It is a golfer's paradise with two courses along the California coast with an unmatched wine program, including its ENO wine tasting room and monthly vintner series and dinners. And for a small fee, you can actually bring your pet. Check them out at ritzcarlton.com Half Moon Bay, a beautiful resort. Absolutely. That's a great prize. It's a, it's a really romantic. Mm-hmm. Very romantic. Okay. And uh, our website is uh, bestofinvesting.com. You can check us out on YouTube by typing in Best of Investing Radio Show and also look at our Facebook page. And also, if you want to record the Best of Investing, you can go to a website, website called dar.fm and uh, punch in uh, Best of Investing and you can record it for future reference. Really? It's uh, pretty I like cool. that. And uh, again, quick reminder, Wool Wraps and Corner Madera in Santa Clara is still giving our listeners a free smoothie if you purchase a wrapper bowl, if you mention the Best of Investing, and try their new pumpkin smoothie. It's got a dash of nutmeg and spice in commercial for them. And um, let's see, today's guest is Mike Zabel, who's a registered investment advisor, who's also an attorney, and whose approach to investment management is radically different from most investment advisors. Mike believes that most investors are paying far too much when they invest. Mike's company, Madrone Retirement Advisors, is committed to keeping the investors' uh, costs at a level that is less than half of what most investors pay for professional investment advice and management while providing the same level of service. He currently manages investments for 401k participants, plan participants, uh, individual investors, nonprofit foundations, and corporate accounts. And he also advises 401k plan sponsors uh, on which funds should be invested should, uh, in the 401k plan and also acts as a fiduciary in 401ks. Well, Mike, let's get right into it. How are you? Fine. Thank you for having me. Good. And uh, I'm going to ask the first question, and then Mark, I'm going to let you start taking it away. Absolutely. Okay. Why why do investment fees matter so much? Well, um, investment fees matter because uh, the percentages seem extremely low in terms of their uh, nominal numbers. So, for example, when you hear 1% or 2%, it doesn't sound like that's going to make a huge impact on your long-term savings. But the math is pretty unforgivable behind compound interest. So let's say an investor started with $500,000 25 years ago. And let's say the market overall returned about 6% a year, which isn't probably too far off what it has returned. And the average investor would would have spent at least uh, probably two and a half to three percent between what they pay their advisor or what they pay for a wrap fee, which is essentially an advisory fee, as well as the mutual fund expenses. And together, they're about two and a half percent a year. Let's just, uh, sometimes they can be a lot higher. They're rarely lower. Um, If the market is returning six percent a year and those fees take away two and a half percent of that, that investor will see his $500,000 accounts grow from uh, grow to 1.3 million over 25 years instead of 2.1 million. That's just the nature of how two and a half percent impacts uh, impacts uh, over many years. Um, so uh, that if you started with $500,000 and you ended up with 2.1 million, that's a gain in the market of about 1.6 million. But if the two and a half percent is taking away 
uh, 800,000 of that, you've essentially given away half of all your returns. So 2.5% compounded in a market that's returning about 6% is going to take away about half of all your returns. Now, that's, that's, that's assuming, of course, no taxes for, for illustrative purposes. Sure. And assuming also that the, uh, the advisor or the mutual funds that are picked are, now, are not outperforming the market. Um, and I think that's a fairly reasonable assumption because history shows that actively managed mutual funds underperform the market by, by basically the amount of their costs. Um, and so probably 80 to 90 percent of actively managed mutual funds over 20 years are unable to beat their costs. So and so what essentially... What is the investor to do? Well, the, my approach and what I believe most, um, most of the people who've really studied this matter who are neutral, for example, there are about 13 uh, Nobel Prize winners in economics who believe that investors should really stick to low-cost index funds. Among these people are, are Warren Buffett, who's actually in many of his hey, investment Mark, you've heard, I've heard of him. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He uh, has basically come out a number of times and said most investors are going to find that their best approach is to be in low-cost mutual funds, and they will find that that performance will beat the, the great majority of investment professionals over many years. So... When Warren Buffett says that, people should take notice. Um, one other thing to consider, too, is that about half of all institutional money, meaning pension funds and so forth, is invested in index funds, low-cost index funds, and only 10 or 11% of retail, meaning you and me, and the investor, the average investor, is invested in index funds. And unfortunately, a lot of that is because of the marketing machine that generates a lot of fees from selling actively managed mutual funds. Now. Institutional investors have access to the very best advisors and researchers, and half of their money is in low-cost mutual funds. That's something that should cause really? the average investor to take note. To take note, yeah. and I think that that you know that's walking the talk basically. So uh, that's that's where that's where that's why I believe index funds are are the way to go. So, Mike, do you think that? Many people who choose an investment advisor do so because they expect he's going to outperform the market. And if that's true, is that the wrong reason to choose an investment advisor? Uh, I think that's a good part of why people choose an investment advisor. I think also the, 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 the simple complexity of investing uh, causes people to go to an investment advisor. Um, and I do believe that a lot of times people think he or she will guide me through this. and. Um, outperform the market or, uh, yeah, primarily outperform the market. And I think that's why investment advisors have always been able to charge on a percentage basis. Um, and we can get into that a little bit too. So the vast majority of them, it, the vast majority of, of investment advisors charge between, a certain percentage between what and what? I think, well, it depends on the, uh, the account, but if it's a $500,000 account, I believe the national average is about one to one and a quarter percent of those assets every year. And that's not including the fees that the investor will also pay for, mu for actively managed mutual funds if that advisor is, is uh, recommending actively mutual, managed mutual funds. So you've got the one to one and a quarter percent for the advisor, and then you've got the average mutual fund expense ratio is about another percent. And then in addition to that, there are a lot of fees in mu actively managed mutual funds that aren't, dis that aren't disclosed as part of the expense ratio, and that includes turnover costs, which easily can add another percent. And then you've also got some tax implications because actively managed mutual funds are always trying to outperform the market and generate a lot of, ta uh, can generate taxes as a result of all that trading. Okay, and you're, you're in our uh, studio, so there's gonna be a reason why you're here, and we'll get into that in just a minute because you are an investment advisor. All right, we are going to cut to our first commercial break and here is the first trivia question. Dueling Banjos was the theme song to what 1972 movie starring Burt Reynolds? The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse, the number 4 fund .com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. Dueling Banjos was the theme song to what 1972 movie starring Burt Reynolds? 888-912-1190. Uh, Make sure to include your name, address, email address, and phone number. And um, also, here is the special trivia question where the winner will receive a free three-day, two-night stay at the Ritz-Carlton Half Moon Bay. Name the only James Bond actor to have appeared in only one James Bond film. Now, here's the rules. You have to email 
Edward at Best of Investing by midnight tonight, your answer. And one random winner will be chosen and announced next week. Only people who have not won a prize before on the Best of Investing are eligible, and we must receive your name, address, email address, and phone number in order to be eligible to win. And we will be right back.